Passover with your holy apostles. We ask you to show us your heavenly banquet on the last day, to foster in us a desire for it, and to lead us to it so that we may be seated at your table there. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Lamb of God, who voluntarily became the Paschal Lamb and offered himself as a redeeming sacrifice. He truly gave us his body as food and his blood as drink, as a pledge of eternal life. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, you are the word of the eternal Father and you became man in order to save us. You fulfilled the laws of the old covenant to lead us to worship in spirit and in truth. You wash the feet of your apostles to teach us humility and love. You ate the Passover lamb with them so that you yourself might become our Passover and our lamb. We glorify and thank you because you offered yourself for us as an eternal Paschal sacrifice. You gave us the mystery of the Holy Eucharist as a pledge of the resurrection and of new life. You shared your eternal priesthood with the apostles and their successors, the priests of the new covenant. Through their hands you offer yourself to the Father as a pure and acceptable sacrifice. 
Now, O Lord, as we commemorate your last supper, we ask you, with the fragrance of this incense, to give your church priests who will offer you in sacrifice. Celebrate your mysteries and make known your teachings, that your name may be blessed, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth. Grant forgiveness to sinners and peace to the whole world. Grant us a good life so that we may pass safely from this world to everlasting life in your heavenly kingdom and sit with you at the table of your eternal paschal banquet. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Priest and sacrifice, O host and banquet, accept our incense and our prayers at this Paschal feast in which you have allowed us to participate by giving us your body to eat and your blood to drink. May we also share in your passion, death, and resurrection that we may one day meet you at your heavenly banquet. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen.
be glory forever. See our Lord's cup filled with his blood, shed it to save us. Take and drink it for forgiveness and for new life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, for I received from the Lord what I also, what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you, pro you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself, and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are ill and infirm, and a considerable number are dying. If we discerned ourselves, we would not be under judgment, but since we are judged by the Lord, We are being disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, Now the feast of the unleavened bread, called the Passover, was drawing near. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, the one surnamed Iscariot, who was counted among the twelve. And he went to the chief priests and the temple guards to discuss a plan for handing him, handing him over to them. They were pleased. And they agreed to pay him money. 
He accepted their offer, and he sought a favorable opportunity to hand him over to them in the absence of a crowd. When the day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread arrived, the day for sacrificing the Passover lamb, he sent out Peter and John instructing them, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And they asked him, where do you wish us to make the preparations? And he answered them, when you go into the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house that he enters and say to the master of that house, the rabbi says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room that is furnished. Make the preparations there. Then they went off, and they found everything exactly as he had told them. And there they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he took his place at table with the apostles. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired, with great desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, that from this time on, I shall not drink the fruit of the vine until the arrival of the kingdom of God. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which shall be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which shall be shed for you. And yet behold, the, one, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. This is the truth, peace be with you. He who eats and drinks of this cup and partakes of this body without discerning of the body eats and drinks condemnation to himself. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is the chapter 11 that we spoke of three or four weeks ago on the liturgy in this first letter to the Corinthians that St. Paul is dealing with. And it has three basic parts to this chapter. The first part we talked about a few weeks ago on the apostolic practice of heads being covered in the divine liturgy, the heads being covered of the women. And contrary to all Jewish custom, that the men absolutely must not cover their head during the divine Eucharist. That's the first part of this chapter. And that we discussed 
a few weeks ago. The middle part, St. Paul deals with what is known as the agape. And agape in the Greek is the word that we often translate with charity. Well, we translate with charity, quite simply. It is the highest of the words referring to love that the Greeks use, because they have a number of words, three, four, I think even five words on what love is. But the agape was a ceremony that was done. It was, it would look like coffee and donuts, but in the wrong place. So it would be something that they would do together before actually the sacrifice of our Lord's body and blood, of our Lord's sacrifice as the Paschal Lamb, the Eucharist. So they would gather together and they would, they would bring food. And what St. Paul is taking them to task on in his letters to the Corinthians is they're showing up and even before everyone is actually gathered together, some of them are already eating and drinking. And he says to them, he says, don't you have homes to eat in? The purpose is not to have lunch. The purpose is, is what they did is they came together modeling the Last Supper. As you notice that in the gospel it says, when they had finished eating, our Lord took this cup, took this bread, this is my body, this is my blood. And so in the very first generation, they tried to, in a sense, imitate that aspect of the Passover meal each time they would gather, at least on the Sundays. And St. Paul takes them to task because he's saying, look, you have poor people that come to the church who don't have the food to bring with them because they're poor. And you who have more, you're not sharing with the other ones. You're making this agape, this charity into a whole mockery. That's why he says to them, and some of you are bringing and drinking too much. So he takes in the task of what you really expect to be of what human beings do, right? So that's the middle of this chapter, the agape. And then the last part, he's talking about, I, I only give you what I have received. So whether it's praying with your head covered, your head uncovered, the Eucharist, this is the body, this is my blood. He says, I only give you what has been committed to me. I give you what I have received from our Lord. That's what this chapter is about. And it's why when he says, that he uses the question of we have to examine ourselves, we have to make sure that as far as we can tell, we are well disposed to receive our Lord's divine body and his divine blood and not just come shuffling up because it's what Catholics do. He says, no, we have to be conscious and vigilant and aware of where we're at before the Lord. And he says, because many of you don't do this, many of you are ill, and many of you sleep, meaning you've died. So there's never been a golden era of the church. Every parish has always had its issues, and Corinth is no different. And so what he says to them is, your physical frailty is because too many of you are taking this nonchalantly and not paying attention to the body of the Lord. And there he uses the term that I quoted in the beginning, that he who receives without discerning the body of the Lord eats and drinks condemnation to himself. Now, hopefully you can understand the ambiguity of that phrase. He's encompassing all three things of this chapter in that one phrase, without discerning the body of the Lord, because the body of the Lord here in his ambiguity in this chapter is meant to refer to the liturgical hierarchy, heads covered, heads uncovered. It's referring to the agape. You're not discerning the body of the Lord. In other words, the other fellow members of the body of Christ who are members with you in this parish and then, of course, the Eucharistic reality of our Lord's body and blood, soul and divinity. So he throws out this one, ambigu one ambiguous phrase is to say that he who does these things without discerning the body eats and drinks condemnation to himself. Eats and drinks because he doesn't recognize the others around him, the other members of Christ, and therefore in the agape, he's actually eating and drinking to his condemnation his treatment on the question of whether or not he has this discernment. Remember, we've told you over these weeks of the Great Lent that the very foundation of the Catholic spiritual life is discernment, learning how to judge correctly, not being judgmental, 
Except myself, to me, in my life, yes, I must be, I must be as harsh to myself as I am gentle to those around me. That is the balance of discernment. And that is what St. Paul is saying here. Let a man examine himself before he approaches the body of blood of our Lord. So this is a beautiful chapter. It contains so much in it. And the key really behind it is St. Paul says, and all that I'm telling you in this chapter, it's only what I've received from the Lord. Which is why he doesn't, he doesn't budge. To turn around and say it's because you're actually not good parishioners in Corinth. It's why some of you are ill and some of you simply have died. That's pretty hard. But again, he'll say what I'm teaching you is not from me, it's from the Lord. And the same thing when he says that if a woman won't cover her head in prayer, in the divine liturgy because of the angels, he says, well then let her head be shaved. That's hard. When you read this chapter, it's very hard. And he's not trying to be hard. He's trying to give us the vision of discernment to see the body, this reality. Note the number of times in the prayers this evening it talks about you are the Passover lamb. You are, the pa you are this body which has been offered for us. You became man so that you could sacrifice yourself. The Passover and all of that, 1,500 years before our Lord, that was done only to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, who would be the true lamb to be sacrificed. The Exodus was not about being freed from political slavery. It was about being called out to the mountain in the desert to worship the Lord in three days. If you read Exodus, you read, if you read it, it's very clear. It is a religious procession out of which happens to also free them from bondage. It's not about the slavery. It's about the fact that they are oppressed by the paganism that surrounds them. You come to this mountain because I am the God of your fathers. And I will free you by illuminating you by the law. I give you Torah, the teaching. Torah just means teaching. So when St. Paul says in this chapter, I give to you, I hand over to you, that is the word traditio. The word tradition means handing over. Literally, it's the action of passing on. It's what you are meant to do with your children. It's what we're meant to do to the next generation. It's what we do with our disciples. It's what we do with students. We pass on only what we have received from our Lord. So I encourage you, sometime over these next three days of profound prayer, go and read this chapter 11 of the first letter to the Corinthians and meditate on it because it is to be assimilated in because it's really the key linking all the things of charity, the church, the divine liturgy, and this profound sense of the divinity that surrounds us as we considered last night on the chain of life, the whole hierarchy that comes of life. And with that in mind, of course, we can appreciate even more profoundly this night, the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, because they are both transcendentally related, metaphysically related, we say philosophically. And when the sacrifice is held in awe, because it is our divine Lord, then the priesthood does just fine. And when the priesthood stands in awe of being consecrated in the divine word, and the liturgy is always beautiful. It is the discerning of the body of the Lord. So the only thing we can ask most profoundly on this night, and unfortunately we don't have the, the ceremony for the washing of the apostles, the feet, and we won't have the adoration because St. Jude's normally is the chapel where we will have the adoration following of the Blessed Sacrament. And as we all know, it's the end of the world, so it's too small of a space. And so unfortunately, we'll have a procession at the very end after communion and the ablutions, and, and I and the servers will go and then come back and then we'll finish the liturgy together. But it is on all of these things of the act of charity, of agape, of the presence of the body of Christ, the presence of Christ, that we ask our Lord profoundly to illuminate our minds 
to transform our hearts so that our spirits can see the Lord in everything, whether it's sitting in a pew or shopping at Shaw's. But that spirit of discrezio, to see the Lord, is everywhere. Because our Lord is present and working. Remember the Gospel of St. John. He is the light that enlightens every man who comes into the world. So yes, even as you're looking at the rutabagas, he is touching the hearts of all those around you. Because if you are a living member of Christ, Christ is speaking to them because you have brought the presence of Christ in your fidelity and in your discernment to be that channel of life also to others. And so let us discern the body of the Lord, glory in this calling that's given to us, and ask our Lord for the great strength and perseverance that is required of each of us to be faithful to that calling. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, the only God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the of his life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have a right. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Mary of Egypt. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of Saint Mark of the Evangelist on page 835. 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, you are true in holy love. May we be bound by your divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
Lord God, we bow before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God and Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation, with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the archangels, angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. transgressing your law, you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By his saving passion he restored us to our original inheritance, and he gave us life by his divine blood. Oh, 
Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Jesus Christ, we remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth and baptism, your saving passion and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion upon us. Have mercy on us in your kindness, and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. sinful children receive your grace as we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we protest our faith in you and Annin monio, annin monio, annin monio, ni te moro rojo jaio corisho, o na genda la inuar corbono jono. Anna dab machno nutein abed lach mohono fagro dam shiho aloho dilan. Olam so ko dam ko sohono dimo dile dam shiho aloho dilan. Holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the honor of building and strengthening of your holy church, and the protection of her children from all sin. May these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect her shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of their lives. Remember, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near, and bring back those who are far. Visit the, visit the sick, 
and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed, that they may live in your fear, and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church, grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign con conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks, to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on mountaintops and in caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Saint, Saint Stephen the Archdeacon, the first martyr, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Mary, Saint Mary of Egypt, and all the saints. May we join their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysus, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father, you are merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure. 
by the grace of your only Son, and by the descent of your Holy Spirit, to sanctify us now, that we may be renewed as your spiritual children, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls, we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life, O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only Son who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and of your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever.
So just as a last note, uh, it is beautiful to see you in your fidelity on this great night. It's a reminder that we have the oils that were consecrated last night, especially if you have people at home who are sick, you're more than welcome to take the little bottles that are up in front. And the little loaves of bread is actually the end result of the loaf that was used last night, that dough was broken up and then baked today. So you're also more than welcome to take those. They're both from last evening. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.